What's up guys, today we're gonna to be comparing the 2016 MacBook Pro against the brand new 2018 MacBook Pro with the Pro Vega GPU inside of it. We're gonna go ahead and pit these against each other in some Final Cut Pro rendering, both some 1080p rendering as well as some 4K rendering. I've also gone ahead and run the compute and GPU performance tests in Geekbench. Quick spec breakdown, so this guy has the i7 2.7 gigahertz in it with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig solid state hard drive. This has the i9 2.9 gigahertz, 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte SSD. So this is bumped up in both the RAM and hard drive, although that shouldn't make a significant difference in the test we're about to do today. Almost two years apart between these models running into production, so it should be a pretty big bump. Let's go ahead and find out. Something just got delivered, let's go check it out. This was surprising to me because I actually ran the render test first and then I ran Geekbench and I found a bigger delta in Geekbench than I expected based on my render times. So we're gonna go ahead and start with Geekbench so you can see simply at a testing level where they compare against one another. And then if your specific use case is around Final Cut Pro, stick around so you can see what happens in that test shortly after. The single thread speed is pretty similar. There was about a 16 or 17% difference in single thread speed between the two. This makes sense. This one's running at 2.9 gigahertz where this is a 2.7 gigahertz single core clock speed. So I wasn't too surprised there. Where there was a bigger delta is the multi-core speed. So it was about a 58% difference, which again made sense. You've got six cores on the newer model with four cores on the last one. Two years difference plus a higher clock speed in general. 60% bump is pretty significant and, and seems to make sense. What numbers really blew me away were the clock speeds of the GPUs because when you look at the comparison, it's 83% difference. So you're talking almost double between the 455, which has two gigs of RAM, and the Pro Vega 20, which has four gigs of RAM. And there may be enough here to want to upgrade if you're doing GPU intensive tasks. So stick around if you're a Final Cut user, let's take a dive into how those rendering tests performed. One of the major things I wanna talk about is how I transferred this guy over to this guy because I think I can save you a lot of time in that process. Typically in the past, I've simply taken a time machine backup of whatever computer I'm coming from and just import that into the computer I'm going to. Whether that's rebooting using uh, Command R and going into the recovery mode or simply using Migration Assistant, I've been able to take a time machine backup from nearly any PC and move it to the new one. That's worked coming from the older gen MacBook Pros to this one. It's also worked going from this 2016 to a 2018 13 inch that I had at one point in time. So for some reason that wouldn't work with this. I think I'm finally making some progress transferring everything over, but it's taken over 35 minutes at this point just to recover OSX on here so I can start to use it. I started off by taking my time machine, which I have hooked up to my router and it runs over the network for backups, plugged it in directly as I booted up the MacBook for the first time here, and it just would not recognize any of those backups. It did find this one on the network, but I figured that was gonna be a lot slower than running through the Time Machine SSD. I plugged it back into the network. It found the backup at that point. I was able to recover it, but it was gonna take uh, eight hours, I think. So there's no way I was gonna sit here and wait eight hours for it to back up a hard drive to the new machine. So I then proceeded to try the peer-to-peer, -peer, where it actually creates a Wi-Fi connection between the two laptops directly and transfers that way. That was gonna take 16 hours. So I started doing some research online because I assumed these both having Thunderbolt, there could be a much better way to transfer this. Even when I plugged these two in and tried Migration Assistant on both of them, it still wouldn't work. Finally, after reading some tips and tricks online, what I found was you plug these guys in together, you reboot the one you're coming from. Hold down T as it's rebooting. This puts it into target disk mode. It's essentially a plug-in hard drive at that point then start Migration Assistant on the new computer. At that point, it's gonna recognize this hard drive. It's also gonna be able to go over Thunderbolt. That whole process took maybe an hour. So I cut it down from 16 hours peer-to-peer -peer 
eight hours over the network to simply one hour backup, which is about what I expected, hooking these two up directly over Thunderbolt. So quick tip right there to help save you time if you are going from an older MacBook to a newer model and it doesn't recognize them with Time Machine backups. All right, so let's dive into the Final Cut Pro X rendering tests now. Again, we're gonna compare some 1080p footage rendering as well as some 4K footage rendering. Before we do that, let's again just remind you that we saw an 83% GPU bump and a 58% CPU bump when we did the Geekbench tests. We'll go ahead and do the Final Cut Pro X rendering tests, and then last but not least, we'll take a look at the disk speed using Blackmagic, so we can compare that as well. And then we'll take a look at everything kind of compiled together. Is it worth going to the Pro Vega if you're a video or film creator and you want the extra GPU power that it packs? So starting off with the 1080p video rendering, I chose a five minute video I created and I was actually surprised at the results I saw. So on the 2016 model, it rendered in four and a half minutes. On the 2018 model, it rendered in three minutes and 15 seconds. So overall, this is 138% faster than this one. You're getting a 38% bump in performance by upgrading to this guy. That's a pretty big gap between what we saw in the Geekbench scores and actual real world results when we're rendering videos. Maybe 4K is better, let's see how that stacks up. So 4K video, I chose one that was six and a half minutes, a little bit beefier video, really get into that rendering, see how long it takes. On the 2016 model, it took 15 minutes. On the 2018 model, it took 11 minutes. So again, that's only about 136% faster. You're getting a 36% bump. Neither of those even meet the 58% CPU bump or even close to the 83% GPU bump that we saw out of the Geekbench scores. So these results were really surprising for me. I actually expected to see a lot faster rendering times on the 2018, especially when you consider the GPUs got double the RAM. So I'm starting to question my purchase decision and wonder if this guy's really worth the upgrade because we're getting the Geekbench scores we expected, but we're not seeing the rendering increases I expected. So last but not least, let's take a look at the Blackmagic hard drive tests to see if there's any difference as well that could be playing into account with these rendering times. Remembering this has the 512 gigabyte hard drive 2016 model and the 2018 has the one terabyte. Oh, there shouldn't be a significant difference just because of the disk size. So I gotta say this was a little inconsistent on the 2016. I had it anywhere from 800 up to 1500 uh, megabits per second on write speed. And this one was a lot more consistent. So we saw it around 2200 up to probably a peak of 2600 write speed. And then a pretty consistent read speed of 2600. Over here, the read speed was more consistent. So on the 2016 model, it was around 2200. It was really that write speed that was throwing me off because again, I ran it and I saw 800 a few times. I also saw up to 1500. 1500 was the max write speed I saw where again, the 2018 comes out a lot faster in that regard. This is two years old. I'm not too surprised that the write speed's a little bit slower. You'd really think that because this is twice as fast, that's gonna aid to the rendering speeds of videos. But again, all we saw was about a 35, 36% bump in the overall rendering speeds of the videos. All right, so that's it guys. That's the comparison between the 2016 MacBook Pro stacked against the brand new 2018 with the Pro Vega 20 GPU in it. I wasn't as impressed as I thought. The Geekbench scores had me really excited, but when I saw the actual rendering test, which is really what I'm gonna use it for, I'm on the fence. Part of me thinks I should return it. The other half thinks maybe that increased speed over time does add up. Let me know what you guys think. Ask me any questions, any feedback you'd like on this. If you want any tips and tricks, I've got this one for another few days before I have to return it. I did do the trade up program so I can sell this back to Apple to pay for some of the hefty price tag of this guy. So that's my plan here. Although I still on the fence of whether I should even keep this one or not based on the rendering I saw. Let me know what else you guys want to see. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button as usual. I've got plenty more to come. I look forward to you guys next time. See ya.